Hello and welcome to Upside Down. In today's episode, I'm going to show you top 5 features that make your life easier inside 3ds Max. We are going to use 3ds Max 2021, but some of those features are available on older versions as well. Let's start. Number 1 is going to be something which is always on your viewport and it's something that is very obvious, very simple, but insanely effective. And these are those three coordinate boxes down here. I know what you're thinking, but hear me out because I will show you how I'm using it and I can tell you that this is a tool which helps you create objects and elements with exact measurements that perfectly align and everything works very simple and very easy. Let me show you really quickly what I mean by creating just a simple box and show you how I use it. Okay, now that we created our box, I'm just going to convert it to editable poly and I'm going to go to vertex. We're going to select one of the vertices and once we have something selected in the scene, we can see the coordinates on X, Y and Z. And now if we want to have another element which is going to be on exactly same coordinates but on the opposite side of the viewport so instead of being on minus being on plus values it's super easy to do because we can just copy the value from here go to the other element and paste the value i'm just going to remove the minus and it's going to be placed exactly on the same spot same goes for height or anything else now I can even grab the other vertices and do exactly the same for them. And if we want, we can do the same thing on some of the other axes. This is a tool that is very simple to use, but it's something that if you are creating modular elements, helps you and saves you tons of time just by being very precise. Now let's go to number two. On second place, I'm going to place the stack modifier. The stack modifier inside 3ds Max is very easy to use and also it's a very powerful tool. You can at any point change the position of different modifiers, modify them, change the parameters inside of them and quickly and easy get a different result with a very non-destructive workflow. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to use this plane which has 10 by 10 divisions on it just to create a very simple corner of a roof. So we are going to modify after that from the drop down I'm going to select bend and here we are going to change the axis I'll put it on 90 degrees and also we need to change the direction 90 is too much let's make it 45 and now to make it a corner I simply can come and put a symmetry I'm going to click so that we can control our gizmo of the symmetry and I'm going to snap it on the edge of our asset and after that I'm going to rotate it on 90 degrees if we want to have an inner corner, you can see how easy it was to create it. And if we want to make it an outer corner, I can just flip it and make it an outside corner. You can see now that keeping my stack modifier allows me to go back at any point to any of the modifications that I did before and change the parameter. So for example, I can go to bend and after that change the angle of the roof. Even if we want, we can add additional modifier in between and make some extra modifications. So if I want, I can add an extra bend and change this value so that we can create a more interesting and different type of curve. Now let's go to number three. On number three, I'm going to place a tool which allows you to place objects on surfaces which have different angles very quickly, very easy, and after that, adjust them and move them around in a very simple manner. This, of course, is going to be select and place. This tool saved me so much time adjusting different elements on surfaces that I have already modeled. So let me show you how it works. I already created a teapot in my scene. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another one, a smaller teapot right next to it. And after that, by using select and place, I can grab it and start placing it on the surface of the first teapot. After we found a position where we want to place our object, we can easily go there and modify it the way that we want with some of the other like move or, or rotate tool. On the fourth place, I'm going to put the spline tool. Using splice helped me more than once creating very complex shapes or creating some elements very quickly. Let me show you one way that you can use splines just to give you an idea how quickly you can create 3D objects just by drawing a couple of shapes. Yeah. 
You saw how quickly and easy you can create 3D object just from a quick shape and after that of course go at any point and edit it to your liking. I'm going to give the fifth place to a very simple tool as well which is going to be inside editable poly so I'm going to put an editable poly modifier and after that I'm just going to select one of our edges and there are two different types of selection that really make your life very easy. This is ring which helps us select the ring or loop which helps us select the loop of edges. There are two shortcuts created by default which are out and R for ring and also out and L for loop which make your life very easy and very quickly to select different elements and after that continue on modeling or editing them with some of the other tools. Thank you for joining me in today's quick tutorial. I hope that this video was helpful and useful for you. Subscribe to the channel so that you can follow more tutorials like this. Leave a like and a comment down below. See you next time.